AMD allegedly has a massive failure rate with their new Ryzen 5000 chips. Internet cafes are becoming mining cafes and in an unrelated note, Bitcoin passed $50,000 today. Let's jump into the tech news. My friend, I'm your host, Brett, of this here hot news. We're gonna get kicked off with the top story today about AMD's alleged failure rates. This is coming as an anecdotal report out of PowerGPU saying that they are experiencing high failure rates on the Ryzen 5000 series chips with them having nearly a 20% failure rate. The tweet from them shows that they had eight DOA units of 5950Xs, four 5900Xs, four 5800Xs, and three 5600Xs, and that they've only had one dead Intel CPU, and it was a 9700K. So that means that their failure rates on the CPUs are absolutely massive as a company that's shipping these out. That has to be unacceptable. They're saying that they usually had about 0.01% failure rate with previous CPUs and that something is going on here with people also saying that they're having USB 3.0 lanes that are giving weird stability issues on the Ryzen 5000 chips and making it just a difficult processor to work with altogether. There's also been other posts backing up this claim saying that they're having similar issues and one usmus who's behind clock tuner for Ryzen saying that processors that work but have poor FCLK overclocking capabilities or have incorrect CPPC tags relative to FIT and temperatures are not counted in those. So just essentially saying that even if they do work, they're not necessarily working the best that they possibly can. Apparently AMD has reached out to PowerGPU to have a chat with regards to the high failure rate that they are having on their CPUs. So obviously number one, this is anecdotal by one company that is working with custom gaming PCs. And it does appear to be kind of dividing the internet. Certain people like this are saying, so you're supposed to be a custom PC company, but do not have the minimum skills to test CPUs because a lot of people are accusing them of their skill set. Installing CPUs properly on motherboards, not having proper settings set up, and that results in their CPUs not necessarily working properly. I don't have enough to actually test this or to back up their claims. I haven't heard very many reports from other people saying that they've had troubles with their 5000 series chips. My 5600X doesn't get much use around here, so I can't necessarily report on mine, but I'm keen to hear if if you have a Ryzen 5000 series chip because they are hard to come by, have you had any struggles with it? I wanna hear from you down below. We'll keep you updated if we get any more details on PowerGPU following up on this. It is worthwhile noting that even though PowerGPU did initially tweet this, you can see that this is a screenshot because they deleted the initial tweet for whatever reason. It's not quite clear at this point. Speaking of products that you can't get your hands on like the Ryzen 5000 series chips, GPUs are just very expensive. And according to the latest report, the prices are still increasing. We are still on the upswing of everything costing more. This is just coming from somebody who is running a program that's scalping all the data from scalpers just to see what's going on. And apparently the average cost increase on GPUs was anywhere from 10 to 35% just last month and does still appear to be going up this month. So that doesn't seem like it's gonna resolve anytime soon. It seems like it's just gonna be a giant pit and swirl of GPUs getting sucked into the massive money cycle of costing three times what they're supposed to, just like they did back in 2018. And now, again, just to talk on something completely unrelated and just for fun, it turns out that some internet cafes over in Asia are converting into mining cafes, especially because of the pandemic. They can't have people physically in their shops, so they're just changing up their business model. As you can see right here, they posted it on Facebook actually saying, essentially that they are changing their business model. Profits are higher than net business, net room owners who want to do it, please contact me to do it for free. At least that's Facebook's translation of what's going on here, but mining happening wherever there's free space and free capital to go around. And again, just completely unrelated, Bitcoin passed a peak of $50,000 during trading yesterday. I'm not sure where it's currently sitting at as this video goes live, but as I'm recording, we're at $48,500 for a single Bitcoin. It does seem to be on the rise, especially ever since Elon Musk discussed the fact that Tesla is going to be potentially accepting Bitcoin in the near future. That started its meteoric rise to $50,000. It was already kind of on the upswing, and I think that just boosted it to the stratosphere. You know, Elon Musk being part of space things just 
makes a whole lot of sense. Speaking of throwing money around, Corsair has announced that they've acquired the company Visuals by Impulse, which is going to go under their Elgato brand. Visuals by Impulse provides professional designs for creators on Twitch for streaming. It's essentially an asset pack that can help your stream to set apart and now is under the Corsair brand. Corsair just going hot and heavy on the mergers and acquisitions ever since they started picking up Elgato in Origin. And it's just one thing after another. Corsair is trying to become a juggernaut in the gaming and streaming industry. Oh no! Oh no! Ah! Oh yeah! And SSDs are a juggernaut now. They have officially passed hard drives in total sales. 330 million SSDs were shipped in 2020, whereas only a paltry 260 million hard drives were shipped in 2020. Absolutely disgusting. Just a total of 207 exabytes were sold in SSDs, whereas the total ship capacity of hard drives was over one zettabyte. So hard drives obviously storing more on them. The average SSD sold was 0.67 terabytes, whereas the average hard drive was four terabytes so you can see a capacity difference but total volume sales goes to ssds and you see the breakdown based on the market report right here of the different brands that actually got sold and xbox wants to sell you a brand new headset they announced their wireless headset which should go on sale in about a month for a hundred dollars it's supposed to connect to the new consoles obviously pcs and mobile devices via bluetooth it has a few neat features that they're taking from their surface headphones such as the rotating ear cup dial that you can change a few things it's to have a 15 hour battery life and a 30 minute charge over USB-C that will give you four hours of playback. Very minimalistic. I don't know if I like the green accent. It does really fit in with what's going on with the Xbox Series X, but I uh, just, the green ring just screams razor aesthetic to me and I don't know if I like it. And I don't know if I like Amazon's upcoming MMO and good news is I won't have to form an opinion anytime soon because it's been delayed again. New World, the upcoming MMO delayed till August 3rd. 31st, allegedly. We'll see if this ever comes out. Crucible, <laughs> uh, which was the previous game that came out of Amazon's game studios, uh, got released in beta and then got unreleased in beta because the reception was just so poor. We'll see if they can do better with their MMO. And we're getting some better reporting with hardware info. It's now adding RTX 3090 hotspot temperature monitoring in case that's something you want to track on your 3090, which is getting really, really hot in some instances, over 110 degrees. Celsius, but now you can monitor it through hardware info and you can see that there are some retailers that are potentially leaking the 3070 Ti, at least in their product specifications. This isn't the first time this has happened. Lenovo also did this way back in September, but this is likely just a mistake. Lenovo has been infamous for saying things are going to be coming out and then really have no idea what they're talking about and they never actually release. This has happened a ton. So don't necessarily trust this. It's just there for your amusement. And we're no longer here for your amusement, friends. Why don't you catch up on yesterday's episodes of Hot News right here. Hit the like button down below in case you enjoyed this episode. Get subscribed for all your tech news and I'll see you in the second episode of Hot News later today, my friends. Cheers.